We have given you Kali Odelius. We've given you Jonathan Lekaramaki. We have given you Noah Osland. And now we are giving you the fourth of the big four Joe Gardens Swedish prospects for the upcoming draft. That's right, we're talking to Patrick Bexell about Liam Ergren today on Locked On Blue Jackets. Locked On Blue Jackets, your daily podcast on the Columbus Blue Jackets. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Blue Jackets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am, as always, your host, Jay Foster. Today's episode is uh, going to be another prospect corner, another prospect profile, like I said at the top of the show. We are going to be talking about Noah... We're going to be talking about Liam Ergren with Patrick Bexell of uh, Habs Eyes on the Prize, noted uh, Swede, noted prospect guy. So uh, that's... That's what we're going to do on today's episode. Uh, before we get started, I am, of course, your host, Jay Foster. As always, super glad that you are here with me to talk all things baby blue jacket or potential baby blue jacket, I guess. Um, thank you for making this your first listen or your first watch of the day. Locked Up Blue Jackets is free and available on all podcast platforms and also on YouTube. So uh, I will just get right into my conversation with Patrick. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's uh, let's talk about the the final of the uh, the Swedish forward trio that uh, that Joe Gardens has has got. Uh, let's talk Liam Ogren. What? Uh, yeah. How do we feel about Liam Ogren? I think he's a he's a, in in a way he's a mix between the two previous Lekemeki and uh, uh, Usland. Um, he is a winger with with skill. Obviously, he doesn't have the the um, strength of shot as Lekemeki has, but you know, quality wise, he is up there. Uh, he he he's also in the shadows of these two because they are grabbing all the attention in a way. Um, um, I think that you know he can be the hidden gem out of those three. He's probably going to fall. And some team is going to grab him, and then he can blossom out and then become that kind of winger that that you do want. And uh, the, for me, the struggle is that, and I understand the the, the principle of, of coaching in Jurgen this year, but uh, to it's it's tough not to see them getting those chances that they should have gotten in in, in the senior league, and it would probably have helped them. Their his his production in in uh, under twenties is is fantastic. You know he's he's averaging two point almost two points a game. It's ridiculous and um, it's it's something um, for me though because Sweden is so long and and distance is quite big. So you you end up playing in in north and south regions. Uh, for the first half of the season, and that means you're playing some really bad teams a few times before you start playing the the, the, the top teams from the other league, uh, from the North League in this case or South League. Uh, but but it's it's it sort of difficult to value those those kind of productions. But obviously he's I think he's what. Was he first or second in, in scoring for for the under twenties this year? I think it was something like that, and and he is he has all the same things, but maybe not as good as Lekker Mackey. In a minute, I have got a little bit more of my conversation with Patrick about Liam Ergren, but first, I want to tell you about Shady Rays. Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that gives you the features of two hundred dollars sunglasses for a fraction of the price. That means polarized lenses, well-constructed durable frames, and premium high-end finishes. Also, something you won't find anywhere else is Shady Ray's insane protection program. Shady Ray's includes lost and broken protection on every pair. They will send you a brand new pair. You lose them no matter what happens. Give them a try, and if you don't love them, you'll pay nothing. It is as simple as that. Plus, 
10 meals are donated to fight hunger in America when you shop with Shady Rays. And exclusively for our listeners, head to ShadyRays.com. Use code Locked On to get 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. I use this code and I am super, super happy with my Shady Rays. They are so much better than any sunglasses I've owned before. So uh, if you want to use this deal as well, that is code Locked On for their best deal of the season. 50% off two or more pairs of Shady Rays sunglasses. And Shady Rays is backed by over 150,000 verified five-star reviews. Yeah, he was uh, he was first in scoring for the, yeah. the under-20s this season yeah. uh, by three points. He had 50, 58 points in 30 games, which... Yeah, you, you 33 gotta, goals. That could be... That could transfer to the, the adult team. Like, all yeah, and- the players that we talked about today actually have been phenomenal for the under-20s, and it is... Baffling. Yeah, and they're playing together, yeah. obviously. So, so there is yeah. that as well. <laughs> but but yeah, I, I can see Ergren um, being a little bit of the hidden gem, if you can say the top scorer is the hidden gem. But on the other hand, he he doesn't really have the same skill as Lekermeki. And I think it comes down to that. Uh, and and it's it's really, really interesting to, to see... Uh, where these guys will fall, because obviously Montreal has a second uh, first round pick as well. Actually, they have three, but one is going to go to Arizona, obviously. Yeah, we uh, well, Chicago, um, we have Chicago's first round pick this year as yeah. well, obviously, because they decided to give us that for Seth Jones, which I'm mm. not mad about. So it's been fun looking at so many different prospects. And being like, well, okay, we've got to look at you know the the kind of the three to eight range, and then the ten to fifteen range. And it's uh, obviously last year we had fifth, twelfth, and twenty fifth. Mm. So it uh, was interesting to look at again such a wide range of, of prospects. Um, Ergren, I think, is projected. The consolidated rankings have him at about twentieth. I think is that yeah, kind of Somewhere where you see that. him yeah. ending up. I think I think more twenty thirty. Uh... Everyone loves the score, though, so it's difficult. But on the other hand, I, whereas I can see Lecker Mackey moving into center, I don't see that with with Ergren. So, so that's a drawback maybe from making him falling a little bit more. Uh, on the other hand, he's he got all the tools for it to to be able to uh, to uh, work through and and become an NHLer. Um, he got the size, he got the shot, he got the skills. Um, it's 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 all those things that it's just gelling them together and getting the 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 kind of support to develop that. Um, all three are really interesting, and then it's if you think about it and going back to you, Gordon, it's they were in the playoffs for the um, uh, for the under 16s. I think they they went to the final. I think they won the under 18 and under 20s, and and they still become relegated out of of the SHL. If you have that kind of talent pool to pick from, that shouldn't really be a problem. So you have yeah, to wonder. It's, it's, you have to wonder really what happened to 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 the development within the team, really. Yeah. Do you think that um, is that like an? How do I want to phrase this? Do you think it's an easy fix? Like, do you think there's something that you can look at in the team and be like, okay, this needs to change next season? And I think it's an organizational. I think it's an organizational thing. Or organizational thing, um, a little bit like Man United, you know. Mm. They they had a fantastic um, youth development program, and now they don't. Yeah. And and I can see you go on with the same thing. And obviously, <clears throat> if you don't get, I mean, other clubs will take some of those away, and and you cannot become frustrated. There is also the question that arises within me after this season with you, Gordon. One of the best coaches in in, in Sweden, Robert Olsson, um, left you, Gordon. He's a he he went from Frölunda to coach you, Gordon, as a main coach, as a head coach, and he was there for three years. Took them to the finals the first year, um, and then he didn't stay on. He's a born and bred you, Gordon fan. It was his dream job, and he left. 
Yeah. And I so think there's something. And I, I, this is just, this is just me speculating. Yeah, uh, I know he wanted to build the youth program up and to get more Stockholm players into the team. Why did he leave? Is that the problem? Is is the board on 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 with the same kind of of system or not? And and uh, of course, he finished third in in the league this year with the uh, Cholestio. So, in a minute, I'm going to finish up my conversation with Patrick about Liam Ergren. But first, I've got to tell you about BetOnline.net. It is your number one source for all your betting stats and sports information. You can find all of the latest sports developments, league reviews, news, including this year's basketball playoffs, the start of the Major League Baseball season, and of course. The Stanley Cup playoffs are about to uh, kick into high gear. So if you want to uh, maybe take a look at the odds and pick who you want to bandwagon, since the Blue Jackets won't be there, I personally will be uh, bandwagoning the Los Angeles Kings. I don't think the odds are very good, but never tell me the odds. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action because Bet Online is where the game starts. So there's there's clearly some kind of disconnect, which is is a shame. Obviously, you know, Joe Garden is the, it's the team that I think about when I think about Swedish hockey. You know, I'm not super you, familiar. You know you're speaking to someone that grew up across the street from Frölunda, right? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, there can be more. There can be more than one. But like, your garden for me has always been like the the. If someone says, "Oh yeah, Swedish hockey," I'm like, "Well, obviously, your garden is is up there." And so it's so frustrating that it's kind of fallen so so far mm-hmm. and, and so fast. But um, I want to talk a little bit about kind of Swedish hockey in general in terms of development because i feel like it's one of the one of the european countries that manages to retain the best players most of the time i feel like there are a lot of other countries where they will go and play in other leagues if that makes sense but i feel like a lot of sweet young swedish players will stay in sweden yeah it's very rare either go, they go to either they stay in sweden or they go to ahl yeah it's, it's it's more more or less that um yeah it's uh I think the fact that the program has been so good for, for so long uh, helps Sweden do this. And it also attracts players like Marco Kasper in this case, or you see Slavkovsky playing in Liga in Finland. Um, so especially from, it's, it's tough to say this because I love both countries, uh, but if you look at it from uh, Czech and Slovakia, uh, you, you have the problem with you know the infrastructure and and the money hasn't really been in that in those organizations after you know when they had monopoly during the Warsaw years or, or the the cold uh, Iron Curtain um, when when they had the monopoly really on on developing players themselves and didn't have to worry about it uh, and it has taken years. You're looking at uh, Slovakia has a great draft class coming out. Uh, Austria is starting to to, to have some players. Um, I think the one country that actually loses out on players, and we rarely talk about it, is Switzerland. Uh, Because you have to finish school in Switzerland. So otherwise, uh, if you leave at 17, you go to North America because that's where you want to get drafted from. So, so, um, But uh, as a teacher, I I can empathize with the fact that you want your, your... kids to grow, get out of school first and then focus on an uh, athletic career. Yeah. Um, so so for, for, for Switzerland, it's that. There are, few, there, there are few Finns coming into SHL, not that many. But you, you're going to see, I think especially Slovakia, they have taken a chance on, on building up a, a youth program in many different clubs and with Slovan Bratislava coming back into the fold and and not being that dominant as they were when they were in the KHL um, a couple of years ago. Now they they are they are obviously the big Slovak team, but they are not the the superpower. So was it Nemets that plays in Nitra? I think right. And and mm-hmm. it's it's you got these 
other teams that will be able to 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 grow their own talent and they staying with the teams and getting heavy minutes in in maybe smaller teams and that would benefit them long run uh mm -hmm. sweden's it's just that the structure everyone is looking at the structure in sweden and copying it so give it another 10 years and and they're gonna be up there as well i'm, I'm i have no doubt about it and there are some fantastic people in in uh, austria switzerland um czech republic or czechia as we're supposed to say and uh, and slovakia so so there, there will be more players coming out of that finland has a great strength as well with their program and their setup and we've seen that over the years um everyone will have to we'll have to figure out russia in a couple of years i think <laughs> but but, yes. but for now for now um the structure is there it's it's so used everyone is used to it uh they're feeling comfortable going to bigger clubs getting more minutes with their under 16 under 18s than staying in 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 clubs for longer maybe but yeah i think it's it's very interesting and i think it's um it's beneficial and obviously everyone a lot of these complexes that you have with uh, with ice surfaces and stuff they're they're close together so you're watching the a team watching the the under 20s and you're playing in the under 18s so you you can see the development you can see how the whole team will play so it's easy to slot in because the the coaches of each age group will talk to each other and also be like you know we play the same way and and uh, it strengthened the, the development and uh, that's probably what means what excuse me uh, what has players stay in sweden longer yeah as uh, someone who follows English hockey, the complete absence of any kind of development system or farm team is uh, a, a big problem in in the sport over here. But um, yeah, this was this was great. I feel like I know about five hundred percent more about Swedish hockey in general now, which is which is awesome. Um, I can't, in good conscience, recommend that people pay attention to the Montreal Canadiens as this is a Blue no. podcast. But no, no, of if course. you want to catch up with like the the prospect work that you're doing or things like that where can people find uh where can people find you and your work yeah well i'm i'm obviously based on ice on the price and uh with uh, your colleague scott and uh, laura I was laura was part of that before i started and uh, uh, i'm sure we'll bring her in for something sooner or later <laughs> anyway but um great crew as well but uh, yeah i think uh, the staff around Eyes on the Price is second to none when it comes to Espionation and probably a few others as well. I know uh, the the Canon guys are pretty good as well, though. So uh, yeah, with, we, with, uh, you, with, with, with you unlocked with, with, with you unlocked on, I'm I'm sure that you know there's a basis for for uh, Columbus to grow. And uh, we're, do, we're doing the best we can. <laughs> <laughs> it's a market that needs to be growing. Hell, it's the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame there, right? <laughs> yep, exactly. And the new team, the Guardians. You know, it's it's also mm -hmm. cool. A good I'm hoping change. that they get women's hockey in the next couple of years. That'll be exciting. But indeed, indeed, and uh, yeah, well, go Belfast Giants, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, English hockey is is doing well. I think um, you know, get a youth program in, but it's tough to compete with all the other sports in the UK. Yeah, that's uh, especially that's football. The that we have, <laughs> yeah. All right, I will. And that's all I've got for you today. Uh, tomorrow we will break down tonight's game against the Tampa Bay Lightning. I am uh, expecting it to be a mess because uh, I believe Zach Wierenski isn't playing, Nick Blankenberg isn't playing, um, Adam Boquist is not playing, so our defenseman is... Uh, it's Vladislav Gavrikov and children, I think is what's happening. I believe it's uh, Gavrikov, Peak, Bean... Kuken, Carlson, and Beiruba, which does not fill me with a whole bunch of confidence. Um, my hopes are that no one gets hurt and that, uh, well, I just don't want Elvis to allow a million goals. And that's kind of all my hopes for this, for this game. Don't embarrass me in front of the Tampa Bay fans and also no one gets hurt. So that's, that's what I hope for in today's, uh, well, tonight's game, I guess. Um, 
But I've been Jay Foster. You can find me on Twitter at underscore Jacob Foster, J-A-K-O-B-F-O-R-S-T-E-R. You can find this podcast over at L-O underscore Blue Jackets. If you have comments, questions, criticisms, you can email me at lockedonbluejackets at gmail.com. If you uh, have comments, questions, criticisms, that's uh, that's where you can go for that. And uh, until tomorrow, make sure you stay locked on.